Bar's job is to dodge the baseballs and get in. So Bar's playing dodgeball. And speaking of which, you remember that I was talking about the workshop jams. Bar is actually one of the characters from the unorthodox workshop jam. Oh, nice, nice. So it's going to be really interesting to see that jam kind of <laughs> representation in here here. Yeah. As you, can, oh, as you can see with Bar there, yeah, his gimmick is that he just takes his bar and carries it around. I love it. I love that so much. Yeah, you can switch it around so you can have a hilt or a tipper. <laughs> And I really love the VFX work on that. Like, it looks so smooth. It is, it is really interesting seeing the dynamic hitboxes. Yeah. Um, we got Bat Bat doing Bat Bat things now. Yep. Two sorties. Two sorties. Two sorties. I mean, well, very different. Batty, I guess. Yep. One sword, one status bar. <laughs> you may use your sword. Well, you were busy studying the bat. I was busy studying the meter. <laughs> Bar had enough of all these meter characters in Workshop and decided to take it from them. Oh! oh that was a that wasn't even setup. sweet spot. Beautiful setup. Yeah. So yeah. as you saw there, Bar can actually use their meter to place down a projectile, and I believe when it's when you're switching meter with down special, it makes the ball have a, a hitbox like that or have a hitbox mm -hmm. so you can kind of do that to like condition people into falling into it so you have those ping pong combos that Absa gets on a sortie another one there is that F special another thing that costs meter but it's really good for his recovery mm -hmm. Oop. and also shout outs to the code making it so that they snap to ledge thank yes. you yes God bless. Yeah. Oh! oh. Snuck that in. Snuck that right in. Just a quick, <laughs> yeah, just a quick one. Just a quick little hit. Yeah. That's oh, one thing, thing I'll give to a lot of workshop devs is like, if you can do something that's like pretty minor balance wise, but like game feel wise, it's insane, do it. Absolutely do it. Like, if it makes your character feel better, put it in. Yeah. Like, do that first, make your character feel good, and then get to like the balancing of the numbers after you got something that's really, really fun. Yeah, because no one's gonna, no one's gonna want to play a character that's not fun to play. Exactly. Make them fun first. Fun first. You can worry about numbers later. Yeah. All right. Oh jeez. Oh. Well, I, yeah, I do see that Adi's using the ball a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one of the best parts about just the stage control that they have, because they can knock it around as long as that doesn't use a meter. They can knock around that ball. Mm. And you see there, using the meter hitbox, hopefully to try and get a sweet spot, which is. Basically, a, you know, half of the meter right now. Oh, good down, down strong catch. Awesome, awesome. That down strong's really quick. Yeah, it's Bart has a lot of really quick moves, <laughs> to be fair. Fundy's character. Another Fundy's character, as That's you good. see him. All right, where are we going next? Fire Capital, hey. All right, don't camp. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, up air, oh, up air, up air. Yeah, the up air chains. Really good for juggling. Oop. With the bonk. Got the bonk. Bonk.ogg. Poggers. Oh, P.ogg. As we see, as we see there's like a bit of leeway with the baseball bat, it seems. Like if you're in the middle of an attack that's going to hit it, it doesn't hit you. You can instead get it, which I think is like a really cool like quality of life thing. Because sometimes, um, Character, like moves that don't have too much disjoint, you'll just get hit when you're trying to hit the baseball. It doesn't yeah. feel good. Even though like it makes sense, like there's a lot of things like that where it's like it makes it makes sense mechanically why it would work like that, but in play it doesn't actually feel that good. And yeah. that's like another thing why usually like hit boxes in a lot of games are usually like, really tiny, or like hurt boxes are really tiny. Try to give the player like you know like the feel of advantage, right? Because they want to be like, oh that's fair, I got hit, right? Yeah. Um, that's something that's that's uh, pretty common. So in fighting games, it's a bit different because it's a player versus player. So like, you have to worry about how the other player feels about it. You know, yeah. um, that's that's sort of why fighting games are so hard to design and balance around. Is because like you have to balance between the enemy's expectation and the player's playing your character expectations, right? Yeah, and you can't expect like a, a player to figure out something you know right off the bat. Yeah. Like one of the one of the great things that because because of Workshop, we have a lot of great players playing these characters. So usually they can find something that's really dumb and be able to exploit it in a way that you didn't think was possible. Oh yeah, that's always the really fun part, is like with betas and alphas, 
people getting a, getting a hold of your like first or second draft move set, and then they just absolutely destroy it. You're like, oh, this is fine, and then they go like, yeah, no, I can do an infinite. Uh, it's like yeah, I, I can stall. I just stall forever. I can infinite. Like here's your here's like here's like a 20 comp move combo that's like got a couple of frames of leeway, but yeah, it just kind of kills. And it's yeah. like, oh, okay. I just push buttons. Yeah, I'll, I'll just push buttons when I got this. Yeah, it's it's really fun to, to get that, and then trying to like work around that. Sometimes it can be a massive headache though, because sometimes it's like a core part of the move set and you're like, ah, like, why is this so Yeah, I, I, so I can't weird? change this, you know? I can't change the switch. Yeah. Yeah, usually <laughs> you can, the best thing to do is to just find find the disease, not the symptom. True. Yeah, that's something someone I see a lot, is a lot of times, like, players are really good at finding problems, but sometimes the specific solutions they give are not, not ideal. Like, there's yeah. some, like, quick solutions you can give to problems, but usually it ends up being something else, or, like, there's just a better way of going about it in, like, another place, you know? Yeah. Um, there's also some neat tricks you can do, like, uh... One one thing I did with Rue early on was actually people didn't think his strong was powerful enough, so I added hit pause and changed the sound effect, and people were okay with it. Right? <laughs> so so it could actually just be a game feel thing, right? That's yeah. actually something that's that uh, people got to look into. Yeah, uh, I remember one of the notes that Chris, I was told by, by uh, the Chris sound effects was that it sounded like I was hitting them with a wet noodle. <laughs> so I just changed the sound effects to make them sound beefier. And speaking of beefy sound effects, Sai is really good at making beefy sound effects. Oh yeah. He really likes his space cut dot OGG. And I I don't blame him. No, it sounds it sounds amazing. Ooh, there we go. There we go. And one of the things that Oh, there's some claps there, I think. <laughs> a little extra. Mm -hmm. That was a close one. Oh yeah. I, I think this matchup is pretty even, honestly. Oh, yeah. I definitely think so. Because like yeah, once Bear gets in. Their power gets in, it's yeah. uh, absolutely, absolutely made them. Uh, Bat Bat's got to deal with that. But Bat Bat does have, like, I definitely think SBS should be utilizing the balls a bit more. Because I, I yeah. noticed that, like, Plat, like, Dinos is super heavy on that, um, in comparison. Yeah, it's one of the more oppressive things that you have as Bat Bat, is that you have this ball that you can just keep putting out onto the field and people have to deal with. And if there's one thing I remember from Bluey, people are really bad at parrying bouncing projectiles. Oh, absolutely. It messes you up so much. Yeah. Like, if, if the projectile's rolling on the ground, it's easy, right? But if it's, like, bouncing on the ground, it messes people up. They're like, oh, wait, what am I supposed to parry this? Yeah. Especially if it, like, bounces up high enough that there's a, there's a window where, like, if you parry, it does nothing, you know? Yeah. That really messes people up. So if you want a super powerful projectile, make it bouncing. That's all you got to do. Make it bounce. We also see like two of the like Ooh. nice that was a good picture. We see like two different philosophies on how to handle like projectile stuff, right? So bars like sit still in one place and you have to like get the player to it. Meanwhile, that patch just goes all over the place. And, like, I mean, you can't hit the the orb to it to a yeah. player, but it's not as you're not going to get as much reward as hitting somebody into it. Oh, and the up exactly. air. And it's also like really limited, like it just goes in that direction, but like. Yeah, that bats is way more like chaotic. I think that's really interesting to see a play here. The two different like design philosophies on how to do like a lingering projectile. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. Nice. Oh. And they could have gone for it, but I feel like then it would have taken the stock. And I don't know if that was worth it. Yeah. So I, I, I appreciate that's a that's but a good move. Think of the flex. It would have been a cool flex, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you play for style, you never lose, you know. Yep. The real victory is the friends we made along the way. True. And we see, like, Bat, Bat can just avoid playing around that orb. Like, there's there's no need to go near orb. Ooh. Oh, unfortunate. that's unfortunate. Unfortunate. Yeah, that is definitely uh, one, of, one of our weaknesses, is his vertical recovery is, uh, you know, an up and down. So it's something that's pretty predictable and can be interrupted. Yeah. And also, also doesn't have too much uh, horizontal range, so that can unfortunately happen. Yep. That dash attack, by the way, can go off ledge. Nice, nice. A little pole vault? Yeah, it's terrifying. Because <laughs> you can do it, uh, if you do it off of a platform, you go down too. So you just get this, like, small drop, like a small dip, and then you get a horizontal boost forward. It's basically like an aerial. Some excellent edge guarding and anti edge guarding, I guess. Yeah. From, uh, from both players here, as you saw there. Bat Bat, went, Bat, Bat parried and went for the strong, and then far. Air dodge through the baseball to like get back. I want to take a moment to appreciate the beautiful sub pixeling on Bar's orb. Mm -hmm. It just makes me happy. Yeah. We're breathing. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, and the up air there are gonna take it. All right. Two one. 
It's getting, getting close here. Game three. Oh, it's game yeah. four. And the, the winner of this has to go face Penguin in semifinals. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, man. Yep, this is losers, losers supporters, so whoever loses out, whoever wins will face Penguin next. Where are they going? I think they're thinking treetop. Treetop would be good. Oh, truffle. Okay, truffle? Okay. This is, a, I think it's a bat bat second, so. I think so, just a tiny bit. Yeah. Just because, like, again, blast zones, but also you have more platforms to kind of bounce the ball off of it. Yeah. I can also see it working for bar as well. It's just, it's going to be a little difficult to throw enemies into the orb. Oh, the up air. Nice, nice. Such a strong move. <laughs> oh, you gotta, I mean, I really like strong up airs, Alien Made, by the way. Um, right. It's just really, I don't know, it's just, I really love, like, up air combos and, like, chaining people off, chaining them together. Because yeah. it's, like, up airs have, like, the unique ability, basically, because, like, as a design space, right? Yeah. Bears usually have to hit forward, and back air just gets to hit backward, right, as a design space. So up air just kind of hits up, so you have, like, a lot of room to just kind of make, like, like a DI mix-up move, you know? Yeah. And, like, that's what I really love about up air. It just kind of becomes like a guessing game of like, okay, so which way am I going to hit you? And like, which way do you think I'm going to, I think yeah. you're, you're, you're going to go next. So which way are you going to DI? It's just like, yeah. it's such a cool little mind game. I'm a big fan of killing bears. Killing bears are very fun too. They're my babies. I love them very much. And you can tell if I designed a character. Ooh, Ooh the up air. That was a sick, that was sick confirm off the top. You can tell if a character is designed by me if they have a killing bear. Nice. Oh, and the up air there the too. Up air. Nice up air tipper. Oh my gosh, man. Bar is so cool. Bar is so cool. Bonk. Bonk, bonk. Bonk. All right, SBS, we see you. Mm -hmm. You're jamming. You're really jamming. Whoa! Oh! The, the low cheese. ceiling. Low ceiling. The cheese. Oh, man. Oh, the Whoa. ball combos. The ball combos. I didn't know it could do that. That was a really short time. That's a good thing. Yeah, ball is insane. <laughs> And the up air. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> really Adi. playing the top top plat that game. Shout out to Bar. Shout out to Bar. All right. 3 1. 